So, Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 to verse 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving. Present your requests to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And then the focus for today, really, verses 8 and 9. Finally, brothers, and I assume also sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever lot of whatever's here, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. What is the Christian life supposed to be like? What's it meant to look like? And the message of Philippians early on in Philippians chapter one, see if I can get this. Just trying to advance the slide thing. Oh, I've gone too far. Right. Thanks, Gavin. So we've got standing strong together as one person, as one body. From Philippians 1 verse 27, where it tells us to stand firm in one spirit, contending as one man for the faith of the gospel. We're supposed to stand as one body together, and that body needs to be healthy so last time out, we looked a little bit at what the health in a local church looks like and the instructions that we had. So the, the first one from verse 4 was about rejoicing in the Lord always. And he says it again, rejoice. And last time I spoke on this, it wasn't like rejoicing for the circumstances that might be awful, but certainly rejoicing for the Savior. Rejoice in the Lord, always. And the, the next thing we looked at was being gentle. That there is a strength in the Christian that, that's supposed to be seen in the Christian, a strength of gentleness, where there's a kindness and a patience that is to be seen in how we approach things. For some of us, this comes quite naturally. Uh, in certain ways, we're more like this. For, for others of us, like myself, it is a real mountain to climb. And we, we all look to the Lord here for his help, for that level of kindness and patience. And then we also looked at prayer. This part of being unified and strong together, to be prayerful in all situations. We, we put worry in its place as we pray. We, whatever our worries are, we are told to put it in its place by praying in these verses. So last time out, just a, a quick look at that, we looked at how to be strong together as we rejoice, as we are gentle, as we are prayerful. And today, we look at the next two aspects of developing a Christian mind in verse 8 and putting it all into practice in verse 9. That is your responsibility and it's also my responsibility that as, as Christians, we are called to do these things. It's not optional. Developing a Christian mind is the fourth one. So Paul tells the whole church, I believe that's in his intention with finally brothers, brothers and surely also sisters. <laughs> I'm not going to say, right, at this point, ladies, Walk out, this has nothing to do with you. No, it has everything to do with you. This is a letter to the church. So finally, brothers and surely sisters, we are called to develop a Christian mind. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. And I, the original form of this sermon, I had like every single word what it says in the Greek, what it means. Um, some of you might have wished I did that one. I'm not going to do that one. Um, I'm going for a more straightforward application as we, go, as we go with this, rather than like, let's be really clever with the word, which has its place, but I'm not going to have its place there today for this one. 
like the previous items, so from verses 4 to 7, with the joy, the gentleness, the prayer, all of these things, they're not optional. For the Christian, these are essential things that we, we're all to be engaging in. It's not just for like, um, my parents used to talk about keen Christians. So growing up, they'd talk about, oh, they're a keen Christian. They're a keen Christian, which frankly should be every Christian. And this is for every Christian. From the apostle to all Christians, for, for me to do, for you to do, all of these things for today. To do this today. And I say that because the last four words there, where it says, think about such things, it's in the present tense. So as in, this is for today, this is for every day, presence. We do these things. And it's a high standard. I mean, you look at those words, just to be thinking about one of those things, it's a really high standard. But that, this should not be a surprise, because in the previous chapter, we have been told our citizenship is in heaven. Chapter 3, verse 20, our citizenship is in heaven. So it should not be a surprise. Heavenly citizens called to high standards. The things we think about should be the best things. Now, of course, you can still talk about everyday things. We have to talk about everyday things. You might say talking about chicken Kiev doesn't sound like the highest standards. Maybe you like different food. Maybe you're a vegetarian. But of course, we have to talk about lots of things and fun things and trivial things and even football, perhaps occasionally golf, you know, those kinds of things. But we are called to a baseline of a high standard. We are getting to get it in your head, we are getting ready for glory. We are not getting ready for the grave. We are getting ready for glory. So let's, let's angle our attitudes. Of course, the, the citizenship in heaven is not paid for by us doing all these good things. Jesus paid it all, right? Jesus has paid for your citizenship in heaven. For those who have angled their lives towards Jesus and said, I am sorry for my sins, I trust you, I follow you, it's already paid. Our citizenship is in heaven. But it doesn't take away the high standards expected of heavenly citizens, of how we should be. We've been gifted this citizenship, and so we operate accordingly. So here is what celestial citizens should be thinking about. Here we have it. Whatever is true, whatever is noble. Um, now, I'm just wondering if we can, we can help you. We actually have groups that you could go to. Can we, Fiona, I don't know if you could help out there a little bit. with. Brilliant. So you look at that list, and we're, we're called to be thinking about, pretty much all the time, these kinds of things. Every day, these, should, these things should be coming into our minds. And my, one of my thoughts was, that's a lot to think about. Perhaps that is too much to think about. You're going, seriously, am I every day going to be thinking about whatever is true, whatever is noble, and all the rest of it? It feels like a, a lot. And also, uh, often to be thinking like that will be pushing against the culture we live in. Often the things in culture are pushing the opposite. Not everything, but there are things in culture that pushes the opposite way to what is not true, to what is not noble. And do I know that it's Christmas? Do I know that you're so busy? Uh, I'm, I'm aware of that, right? I'm aware that we're... We get very busy, and Christmas is perhaps the worst time for being busy. So how are we supposed to get get on with this list? It's just a lot to think about. We're very busy. Culture can sometimes and often be pushing in the other direction. How are we going to go about this? Well, I'm just 
in, instead of going through every single word, I'm keeping it simple today. Start right here. As I was going through the list, I kept just thinking, yes, Bible. Yes, God's word. Yes, what God says. That is all of, that is all of those things. I don't know if I can get this ahead. All of those things. It's, it's in the Bible. I, the entire list points me to this book, soaking in these scriptures, taking every opportunity to listen to what God says. Hearing, hearing his voice in these pages. And it got me to thinking, like, at Davenport Road, how do we read the Bible? How do we get into the scriptures in, in good ways? How do we value, how do we prize these words here? How do we do it? How do we breathe in more Bible day to day? Well, there's lots of ways, and I won't have included everything here. But one of the things is, turn up. So you did that one. Great. <laughs> Tick. You don't need to do that one because you're already here. So turn up where the Bible is explained and preached. So turn up on a Sunday. Turn up on a Wednesday. Join a home group. Why not? Join a home we Okay, you'll give us a problem because they're pretty full already. But hey, give us that problem. We want that problem. We want home groups that are too full. Please. So join a home group. Talk to me. Talk to Andrew. Talk to Nigel. Join a home group to understand this book. To understand this book, but more, to be moved by this book as the living God speaks to you. I mean, I, I was a teacher. I like learning. It's good to learn what's in that, this book. It's even better to be moved by the living God by what's in this book. And he does that. His spirit does that. So turn up. Um, at other times, how do people really get into the Bible here? Some of them, some of them are reading Christian books that emphasize this book. Uh, there, there is a, for example, there's a ladies book group that meets one Saturday a month. And they're, they're getting into what this book says through other Christian books. And many people here, they listen to sermons. They, they might listen back to this sermon. And I know there are people here and they, they have like favorite preachers and they'll listen to them outside of a Sunday or on a Sunday. And, that, and it, it's all helping. And some go to Christian conferences and that's helping. Some are reading the Bible one-to-one -one with each other, and that's helping. Some folks are meditating on the scriptures, as in rather than just reading 15 chapters of the Bible a day, they read a verse, and they reread it, or they memorize it. Um, a thing that a lot of us do, I think, is we listen to good Christian songs that have the scriptures running through them. There are some terrible Christian songs that do violence to the scriptures, watch out. But there are many good Christian songs that we listen to that help us to soak in the scriptures. And crucially, there are many people here who have time alone with God, with the Bible open, reading. Um, got these for free in the post, our daily bread. There's a large print version of it out the back there and a UCB one. There are Bible notes around. If you are struggling for any kind of Bible notes, have a chat with me. We'll see what we can do. Some folks don't use Bible notes at all. They just go straight to the Bible and they read it and they love it. And there's, there's that way. We don't want to be in a place where we're shutting God out. Where the Bible is closed and what, what tends to happen, like if we're, we're not regular at church, we're not regular at church, we're not really that bothered about reading the Bible, what tends to happen is we are shaped, it's, it's kind of automatic, we are shaped more by the world and less by the word. It's just what happens. It's kind of what comes naturally to us as humans. If we are not listening to the word we are shaped by the world 
the, the world is aggressive in a kind of subtle way and sometimes not so subtle. You watch the telly 24-7 and aggressively in a subtle way, you will be shaped by the television. If you're not in this. So are you, are you a Christian? I know not everyone here is a Christian, but are you a Christian here today? Then it, it is your duty to get into God's word. It is your duty. But I mean, more than that, okay, it is your privilege. It is your honor to be hearing from the Lord day by day. God's speaking. God has spoken and it is for your good. And it is for the good of the people around you. And so when we hear God speaking through Paul here, and I'm saying, read your Bibles. It's a, it's a wonderful privilege when he says, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Now, it's not just the Bible. There are other things you can think about that are linking into those words. But start right here. Start right here. Seize every opportunity to know the Lord and his ways. Through what he says on Sundays, on Wednesdays, whenever you can. It's for your good. It might seem like I'm beating you up, but it's for your good and it's for God's glory. Now, I'm going to give you four ideas of how you can pursue this. So... Some people occasionally, they, they get the phone out, right, and they take photos of stuff that's on the screen. That's okay. I don't mind. If, if you want to do that during some of these, uh, you, can, you can just to keep a note of some of the things I'm about to say because they'll come up too fast for you to remember them all, I think. But here we go. Four extra ideas to get into or get back into the Bible. Now, for some of you, you don't need this. You're already reading your Bible. It's going really well. You don't need this. But I, I ask that you be patient with me as I explain it because other people will really benefit from some of this stuff. So hugely practical ideas of how to get back into the Bible. The first one is the Rejoicers Bible. Right, we're, we're called to rejoice in the Lord. He says it again, rejoice. So the Rejoicers Bible is very simple. You take a Bible... I suggest not your favorite one, like an old one that's on a shelf somewhere, and you turn it into a Rejoicers Bible. It's dead simple. Uh, Christine and myself are having a go at this. We're looking at 1 Peter, because the church is looking at 1 Peter from January. Looking at 1 Peter, we read it, and then we get the highlighter pen out. This is actually the Bible that we're using, right? And, you, and that's the highlighter pen. And you just, you read it, and you go, what is there to rejoice about in God's from that passage and you, you highlight it and then you thank God for it and then the next day you read a bit more you highlight a few more things to rejoice about in God and then you thank God for those things as well that's the first idea so you get this you end up with a rejoicers bible which seems like a good thing you know oh what's that bible oh that's that's great that's our rejoicers bible we took like 15 years to go through the whole Bible in reunion, or however long it takes, maybe a year, right? Uh, for those of you who don't have smartphones, you can completely ignore what I'm about to say. This is a bit of a, bit of a smartphone idea. It's the, there's an app called Explore, and it's by the Good Book Company. And you, it gives you just daily Bible notes that look a bit like this. That's a... Uh, that's a free one. It's called Time with God. You can download this app in two minutes, and then you've got the Explore app on your phone. Um, the Time with God one is very much about why bother reading the Bible, and it's excellent. And you click on the red bits, like the Matthew 5, verses 10 to 12 that it says there, and it immediately takes you to that part of the Bible on your screen. So you don't have to be juggling Bible and screen. It's just all there on the screen. And then once you've read that bit of the Bible, you, you can click back and it takes you back to the not particularly long Bible study, but long enough. Um, and it's just some great Bible teachers on there. I've just 
downloaded one for ones you have to pay for, 99p, something by Christopher Ash. It's all about the names of Jesus, linked into Christmas. Um, just, it's, it's excellent. So that's the second idea, the Explore Bible app. Um, this one I've suggested to people here, and they, they do really like it. So this is the U version of the Bible, and it's by Life Church. It's completely free. Um, this is very helpful if you struggle to read, because if you're anywhere near Wi-Fi, you can just play the scriptures. Uh, so in virtually any translation you can shake a stick at, so King James, New King James, NIV, ESV, etc., it's got them all. You can download it so you've got the Bible on your phone offline, but then get online and you can play the Bible to your heart's content, which is um, completely free, which I very much appreciate. And then if you're um, tight like me and you just like free stuff, I really like free stuff. It's completely free. So that's, that's a good one. And the particularly if you struggle to read the Bible, it just plays it to you. Uh, okay, and then the last one is memorizing bits of the Bible, but in a particular fashion here with kids' songs. I kid you not. These are good. Right, so there's a list here. Um, this will make no sense to some people, but if you use Spotify, if you use Spotify, I will send you my playlist of about 60 songs of kids' songs. You just message me and say, I would like to dive in with these 60 songs. Um, Slugs and Bugs sounds terrible but it's actually excellent. They just take the words of God, put them to music, and um, it's strange how the memory works, but we remember songs. Um, some of you have worked with people who are losing their memories, but they, they remember the songs. Now, I like having these kinds of songs in my head. Uh, my poor wife has to put up with me playing these songs around the house when I'm cleaning my teeth. Uh, in the car occasionally, um, or, you know, if you get those little earbuds and you're walking around or you're doing chores and you can be listening to these, there's a massive range of musicality there, let me tell you. Some of it is bare bones and some of it is really good musicianship. So um, I would recommend any of those different ones with their very, some of them strange titles. Um, now, I know I'm not a kid, and you're not a kid, but I love listening to these. They're very positive, very encouraging, and it's word for word, mostly, the Word of God. So, are you going to do any of these? Uh, maybe Bible reading is going so well for you that, frankly, you need to stay away from that list. It might distract you. But for everybody else, which is probably at least half of us, I would... Go for one of those. The easiest one, obviously, is the Rejoices Bible. You just need a Bible and a highlighter and highlight the stuff that is like, oh, that's so good. Promises of God, wow. This is part of our responsibility as Christians to develop a Christian mind. And one of the, the starting point has to be the Scriptures. But of course, Christianity isn't just about the mind. It's about the rest of the body as well. Where your Christianity is about where your feet take you. Christianity is about how your hands serve other people. Christianity is about where your money goes, where your energy goes. And so we're told to put it into practice in verse 9. Paul writes, verse 9, Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, that, that is very comprehensive. He's like, everything. Put it into practice. And the God of peace will be with you. So going from verse 8 into verse 9, if you put it this way, as we develop a Christian mind, we don't want to leave the mind behind as we step forward into the day. 
A truly Christian mind leads to truly Christian action. Out in the open, in public, with others, with your brothers and sisters here and everywhere else. And verse 9, the direction is clear. Put it into practice. And it's, it really is absolutely everything. Whatever you, He says, whatever you learned or received or heard from me, from Paul, or seen in me, put it into practice. So what does Paul, <coughs> excuse me, what does Paul do? What does Paul say in his life? What does he write down? Well, we, we have it in here. So from Romans to Philemon, there are 13 books of the Bible, and they're all by Paul. So the, the long answer, what are we supposed to do? Yeah, all of that. All of, the, all of all you can see in those 13 books. But that seemed like quite a lot to get into for the remainder of this sermon. So I thought we'd drill down to what we've just looked at in the verses from the reading. So we are certainly called to these things. To put them into practice. So I'll, I'll review these quickly and then I'll pray about them. And then we'll sing our final song. So, so here we go. So we are called to rejoice in the Lord. And it's not for the circumstances, it is for the Savior in those circumstances. We have a wonderful Lord to rejoice in. Jesus is our joy. And when I preached on this last time, you can find it on our YouTube channel. So you you can see it again. But let's face it, most of us are not going to do that. We're not going to watch it again. So to say the rejoicing that Jesus is our joy in the, for what he's done, for what he is doing and what he will do, past, present, future. And then we're called to be gentle. This strength that brings kindness and patience to the table, it's something that God does in us. It's layers and layers of God-given grace. So we're less likely to harm people. We're more likely to help people in our attitudes in our actions. And then we've got being prayerful to put worry in its, its place as we pray in our worry, in our anxiety. And then today we looked at developing a Christian mind, breathing in as God breathes out his words to us. As the starting point to develop a Christian mind, we want to know God's word. And the final thing is put it into practice. We want to live it out, all of this. All of these things. So before we sing our final song, let's pray about these things. Pray for God's help. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that we are the people who have rejoicing in our hearts. It is there. It's been given by you. We thank you as we look back in history, we see our Lord Jesus Christ, and we see how he has saved us. He has done it all, and we rejoice in that. And we thank you that today we do not walk alone. The Spirit is with us. And so, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is with us today as we go through every day. We thank you we face None of the trials, none of the troubles and difficulties on our own. You are here to help, to comfort, and to inspire, invigorate, energize each day that we have. Father, we thank you. And we thank you for the future in the Lord that we are heavenly citizens already, already in the bag, guaranteed, gifted. And so we rejoice. Father, we recognize there are folks here who their circumstances clearly say, do not rejoice, do not rejoice. And Lord, we recognize there are times to mourn, to grieve. And Christmas can often be that time where it's, it's hardest. So we ask that you would help the people here, those who are going to be grieving and mourning this Christmas. Lord, may they know your closeness, your presence, your help. And a reminder of that, that hope that we have, the sure confidence of where we are going.
Help us to be increasingly rejoicers here in our, in our thinking as we think about you. Thank you that we always have more to rejoice in than there is to be sad about. The rejoicing is forever. The sorrow is temporary. We thank you that that is the case, Lord. And Lord, help us with gentleness. We don't want to be doormats who are walked all over and pathetic, spineless individuals. Lord, help us to be strong for you where we need to be strong for you. But also help us to be gentle, kind, calm. When others might be losing it, help us to be steady and looking to you. Looking to the future, not looking to the immediate. Lord, help us to honor you in how we treat other people. In the ups and downs and the hurts and the frustrations. Help us to honor you more and more. Father, forgive us for times when we have been miserable and mean. Help us to be increasingly rejoicers who are known for kindness and the kind of patience that you show to us. And Lord, help us to be people of prayer. May we see great answers to prayer and super prayer meetings where we are very much aware of your presence and your help. And when it comes to the Bible, Lord, we thank you for the scriptures. We thank you that you have blessed us with your very words that we are not lost in a hopeless world, but we are found and we can see the way ahead in you. Father, thank you that you instruct us, you shape us, you transform us, and you are our God, and we are your children. What a glorious thing. So Lord, for, for where there's been a lack of hunger with your scriptures, we ask that by the Spirit, make us hungry. Hungry to... Like we're hungry for food, but hungrier still. And Lord, help us to put all of these things into practice. Help us to be increasingly people of the word, shaped by the word. Looking increasingly like Christ Jesus. And the way that he would go about things. Amen. Amen. So our, our final song. We're actually going to listen to to start with. So it's uh, My Life is an Offering. It's, it's new-ish. We've heard it before, but we'll remain seated and we'll listen to the first verse and the, and the chorus. And then we'll stand and we'll sing the whole thing together.